has always been a transient city. It's older than the country. It's over 300 years old. I think the country is what, 264 or something like that. Okay, so, so New Orleans was, had it going on when the colonies were trying to get it together. So New Orleans is always gonna be unique. Down on the bayou Jazz and harmony fill the air Creole all around So we're obviously a city that is uh, surrounded by water uh, and uh, it's an existential uh, threat to us. And so um, for a long time the city has pumped out the water when we've had um, big rainstorms and hurricanes that have come through and that's still a major part of our strategy, but um, since Hurricane Katrina, uh, we have kind of shifted strategy uh, to living with water. We, as a city, are, we have a lot of rain and we have dried out clay soil that does not absorb that rain, and then we have pavement on top of that. We're a very overpaved city, so if you can remove some of that pavement, dig out the really like desiccated dried clay underneath and put in something that can absorb water and hold storm water, what it means is much more flood resilience. It's only the wealthier homeowners who can afford to put those flood mitigations onto their property. However, it's people in lower lying areas who tend to be lower income who are the most impacted by the worst flooding. So what FYI does, what the Front Yard Initiative does, is helps with a little bit of a cash reimbursement for pavement removed to get people in the door. Uh, my family's been in this community for eight generations. And um, so I just remember climbing so many trees and picking pears and figs and oranges. You know, just out in the neighborhood, there were trees like that, very prominent. But we lost a lot of them with Hurricane Betsy and then with other hurricanes. The reason people would say no to a tree in their community also goes back to storms like Katrina because in Katrina you might have had a tree fall in your house or your car or it's the last thing you want to deal with when you have eight feet of water in your house. If you plant one bald cypress, for example, that drinks 880 gallons per day when it's raining, that tree is not going to change how a neighborhood responds to a flood or to a rain event. But if you plant a whole neighborhood with native water-loving trees, that means if it floods, they're not going to die. Then you're going to change how a neighborhood responds. You're going to turn that neighborhood into a big sponge. Yeah, New Orleans is a is like a front yard porch culture. You know, we sit on, you know, we have, you know, couches and rocking chairs, and people are outside. It's really important for us to be, you know, in the community and see people and see people walking by um, every day. Oh, so. if you try to pour a gallon of water into a cup, you get overflow. Um, so it's it's just like that. Um, not to mention that the pipes have about a 50 year lifespan and most of them are 80 years old. Nobody willing to put in the money and put in the work and put in the political will to, to maintain the pipes. And identify both what we call gray and green infrastructure improvements, so both, you know, upsizing pipes, the gray, the gray kind of uh, parts of the system and then identifying green infrastructure improvements where we can retain it, so we're, we're kind of going along both avenues. Show me your prize, the 
New Orleans is part of the soul of America. It's one of uh, the country's most unique cultural uh, places. You know, I have every, every amount of confidence that the city of New Orleans will, will be here in 50 years, despite the challenges that we're seeing with climate change. Um, I think we're, we're certainly gonna, going to be uh, operating differently.